Hi, hello, welcome to Devon Monks Works and Worlds. I think we are on Monday Monk 73. And I want to thank you very much for stopping by this week. I really appreciate you spending a few minutes here with me. I hope your week is going well so far. I can't believe it's Monday again already. <laughs> the weeks are going by fast, people. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to cover what I usually cover, which is um, how writing is going, how knitting is going, and just things in Monkland in general. So <clears throat> how's writing going? Writing is going well. Thank you. Um, Backlash is out. That is book three in the Broken Magic series, which is the Shame and Tarek series. You can get it now at all of your favorite places. The print version of it is out also. Um, so you can get that too. I think it's the first time it's ever been in print, so that's kind of cool. And um, Dirty Work, book four in that series, will be out on the 25th, which is next, not this Friday, but next Friday, I think. So coming up real soon. So that's going well. And I am working on, um, I'm working on Wayward Devils, which is book four in the Souls of the Road series. But I'm also working on a revision of an older work that that might work out really nicely as, as some kind of a serial, like, you know, a section like a couple thousand words or a thousand words every, you know, a couple times a week or every week or something. And so anyways, I'm intrigued with that project and it's going pretty quickly. So I want to just zip through that so I can have it and maybe somehow share it with everybody. It's not er quite urban fantasy, so that would be something different. And um, I'll tell you more about that as time goes on. Okay, how is knitting going? Knitting is going well, except I have done nothing. <laughs> I have not knit. I'll be real honest here. I um, uh, In the evenings, I've been pretty busy, but also I have really bad eczema right now going on with my hands and the yarn and eczema do not mix well. So I'm kind of waiting for that eczema flare to go away. I'm doing all the things to make it go away. And um, after that, hopefully uh, my hands will settle down, be a little less uncomfortable, and then I should be able to get back to knitting again. Um, the toy is coming along though, so it will be ready by the end of uh, August, which is when the newsletter will go out, probably around the 25th. I'll probably put the newsletter out at the same time as the um, as the last book in the series, so I can tell people in the newsletter that the book's out too. So look for that newsletter um, around that time. And if any of you here are some of the people who have recently signed up for the newsletter, thank you very much. I'm going to reply to all of those signups and say thank you in person, but I wanted to say it here. Thank you for signing up and to remind you, if you sign up for the newsletter, you're in the running for one of the um, toys that I give away every month, and I'll put a link down below to that. Okay, so knitting is going well in that it's not going at all, but that's okay because it's going to be fine. Um, and the last thing is just how things are going in Monkland. Oh, wait, there's one more knit thing I want to talk about a little bit. Or maybe it's a Monkland thing. I knit a toy for someone who uh, gifted me uh, a really beautiful writing pen. And uh, in exchange, I offered to knit a toy and he chose for me to knit Stone the Gargoyle, which is the toy I designed from, and it is based off of the character in the Ali Bextrom books, which was the first urban fantasy series I ever wrote. So Stone is a Gargoyle in that series and I uh, designed that toy and I knit one for, uh, for him. And he has created a Facebook page for Stone the Gargoyle who is going on adventures. So if you want to watch Stone the Gargoyle go on adventures, I'll put a link down below to the Facebook page. You can watch this knit toy <laughs> go exploring. It's pretty cute. I think it's amazing what he's doing. And so I just wanted to share that. So go follow Stone, <laughs> see what he's up to. Okay, and uh, let's see. Now we talk about what's going on in Monkland. Well, it's supposed to be 108 today, which is like 108 Fahrenheit is like 42 Celsius. Hot. Too hot. This is one of our hotter days of the year so far. Um, we're going to have about two or three more days in the hundreds and then it'll it'll go back down into the 80s and 90s, which is much better. Um, so today is a roaster and we're doing all the things to keep cool and um, including watering uh, our flowers and our trees so that they don't uh, suffer too much. And um, what else have we been doing around the house? Oh, oh, more decluttering. You know how I said I got into my craft closet and I decluttered in there? Well, I've just continued on with that. I have um, decluttered about half of that storage room now. We had like four shelves and it's down to two shelves. The um, items, I we got rid of like three more bags of garbage and uh, dozens of items that we're going to give away on our free giveaway, uh, neighborhood giveaway group on Facebook, Buy Nothing Group it's called, and then donate whatever uh, people don't want to take off of the free group. And it's feeling really good. It's nice to know, 
It feels like there are fewer things for me to have to remember to take care of or remember where they are or wonder if we're ever going to use them again and just shuffle them from place to place. Like, um, honestly, here's one, and I feel guilty about this one, but I'll talk about it. We had a pile of styrofoam cups, which we bought years ago, years ago when styrofoam, when I didn't know the styrofoam was so bad for the environment. Uh, we had bought some styrofoam cups for big family get togethers to have hot drinks in. And um, I don't buy styrofoam now. I don't want to buy styrofoam, but I had all this leftover styrofoam and I have been holding on to it just because I felt guilty that I had it and didn't, I felt guilty if I would throw it away too, just because, you know, it's, it's going to fill up a garbage landfill somewhere and I don't want it to. But the truth is, it's going to fill, it has been made, it has been bought, it's going to fill up that garbage landfill either today when I throw it away or in 30 years when I finally get over the guilt and it gets thrown away. So I went ahead and just got rid of them. I don't want to use them. We aren't having big family gatherings the same way that we used to. And if we do, we are just doing regular coffee cups that I just wash, just, you know, ceramic coffee cups. So, um, we've moved past the styrofoam cups and so we just went ahead and threw them away. Now I could have done a giveaway on those two giveaway groups, but we've had them for a long time and I don't know what kind of dust has gotten into them and I just didn't want to hassle washing all of them before giving them away. So that's like one of the things that I just kind of bit the bullet and let go of. And there were some other things like that, um, that, you know, were usable, but not great. And so, uh, three garbage bags later, we it feels much lighter in there, much cleaner in there. I still have the whole canning closet to go through that has all of our canning jars and um, like our canning pots and that kind of stuff. And once that gets tidied up, then I have to go through my yarn because <laughs> I've gone through all my other craft uh, material and things except for my yarn. And then that room will be uh, tri-functional, bi-functional. It will be used as a um, craft space for craft item storage and then some crafting sewing room, basically. Uh, yarn sto storage place, canning jar and canning item storage place. And also it will be used for a little grandchild room for um, naps and that kind of thing. It just has a good little space and it's a nice quiet little room. So it's gonna work as a little a, a little person guest room. So yeah, so making progress on that felt really good, but you know, it was it was five straight hours of 100% um, just working on that and not stopping. And um, what's really fun is that I got my kitchen involved into it because some of the things I wanted to store were really kitchen things. And I have very, very high kitchen cupboards that have never been useful. They're built-ins that are like, I have to stand on a chair to get to them. We have really tall ceilings in our kitchen. And I found things that store very nicely up there that we only get into like once a year that are perfect for storing up there. And so I feel like we're finally using that really tall cupboard space that we've never found good use for. So it's a win all around, people. Try decluttering. Super fun. It's uh, good things happen. Okay. And then I thought just for the last thing I do is pull a little uh, paper from the wooden box to see um, a subject that I could talk about. Just little strips of, whoops, strips of paper. And I'll just pull one out here randomly. I'm not looking at it. I can't see it yet. Oh, well, it's kind of an interesting one. Let's see if I can get up there. Series. I'm not sure why I wrote this other than I think I was going through the alphabet and trying to think of every letter that I had something that made sense to talk about with that letter with my writing. <laughs> so series. Yes, I have written a lot of them. I have come to find out that I don't write standalones. Who knew? Except this one thing I'm, uh, the revision thing I'm working on is a standalone, but everything else I've written is a series. So, well, I mean, except for short stories, but again, so all my books have been series. I have, I don't know how many, Allie Beckstrom, uh, the spinoffs are the Broken Magic series, that's two. Uh, I have the Age of Steam series, which is steampunk series, which I am hoping will be coming back out next year. Ooh, that's cool to know. Um, I have the uh, House of Mortal series, which is kind of uh, science fiction-y, urban fantasy. Then I have the Ordinary Magic series, which is the uh, sleepy little beach town where gods of vacation and monsters reside and, and the three sisters have to kind of keep the rule of law there. That's Ordinary Books. The spinoff from the Ordinary Books are the Wayward Soul books, and that's two um, star-crossed lovers uh, who are cursed to travel Route 66 while they're trying to find the monsters who have cursed them to it. And also they get tangled up with gods 
which happen to be the gods from ordinary books, but like you don't have to read ordinary to read wayward souls. You don't have to read the wayward books to read ordinary, but you can if you want. You'll see some characters that cross over. Um, anyway, so that's the wayward souls books. And what else do I have? Oh, I have the hockey urban fantasy books. And is that all of them right now? I think. Did I miss any? Did I miss any? I didn't, did I? That's seven series, right? Yeah. Okay, I counted seven. I could be wrong. <laughs> but I have about seven series out now. I enjoy writing series. Um, they range anywhere from about three books. I know the hockey book needs one more book. Uh, from about three books to nine. I like the nine book arc. It's just a really comfortable length, I think, to write. Um, because you kind of, it's done in threes. You do a three book, three book, three book. And that just, something about threes repeat in storytelling and create good uh, tension and, and uh, stories going over that arc of the beginning of the series is book one, you know, setting everything up. Book two is like the middle of this conflict that you've set up. And book three is our heroes winning or losing, right? So it's kind of like the one, two, three works really nicely in, in uh, the idea of a series arc. So most of my series are either three books, nine books, or um, I think the steampunk will be five. Um, so that's kind of, if you're looking for Devon Monk series, you'll find them in those numbers, all odd numbers, three fives and nines. <laughs> you think it'd be three sixes and nines, but no, no, apparently not. <laughs> so anyways, uh, those are the series that I have. Um, I love reading series books. Do, how about you? Do you like reading series books? If you do, put, put a couple of suggestions down there for me. I read a lot of different kinds of genres, so um, I'd love to hear what series you have enjoyed. And uh, maybe I'll give them a shot. And maybe somebody else in the comments will read them and want to give them a shot, read something fun. And uh, yeah, so that's it. I knew today's was going to be pretty short because um, it's hot. It's just hot, y'all. And I, I, I'm, I think we all just need to go get a big old tall glass of lemonade. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get myself a nice or a seltzer. I'm super into this flavored bubbly water right now. You know, the seltzer water that's... Um, I, there's a lot of different brands, but like Bubbly or LaCroix and those kinds, a Polar polar Ice or something like that. They're like soda, but with a slight amount of flavor, but no sugar. So they're not sweet. And when I first tasted them, I thought, I don't like this. And now I just can't get enough of them. I really enjoy them on a hot day. You get that bubbly like of a soda, but no sugar. So it doesn't feel so much like you're drinking a melted candy bar. <laughs> So anyways, I'm going to go get myself a lemonade or a seltzer or something. And I hope you have something nice and uh, delicious to drink too in the weather, in the hot weather, if you're in hot weather. And until next time, I'll talk to you later. I hope you have a wonderful week. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next Monday. Hopefully I'll have a toy to show you next Monday. That's what I'm aiming for. So until then, stay cool. I'll see you later. Bye for now.